The Raptors just revealed that Justin Champagny has been re-signed to a multi-year deal, bringing him back to the Toronto Raptors. So in today's video, we're going to discuss what this contract really means for the team, and we're going to go through what the roster should look like at the start of this season. Let's get into it. What's going on everybody, it's Jacob here back with Amateur Hour Sports for another Toronto Raptors YouTube video. On this channel, I bring you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news, and I'm going to be doing it all throughout the offseason, so make sure you are subscribed to Amateur Hour Sports. We're on our road to 11,000 subscribers. You can help us get there, and if you find yourself enjoying this video along the way, be sure to drop a like. It goes a long way to supporting the channel, and we want to hit 300 likes on today's video. I know that we can do it, but let's get into our content for today. Justin Champagny has signed a contract with the Toronto Raptors. Now, it is not as exciting as it may seem because Justin Champagny is one of the many people who are going to be fighting for a roster spot at the start of next season. We've just seen the Summer League. We've seen three out of four of the games in Summer League. And, you know, there's been some good performances. There's been some bad performances. Unfortunately, we don't really know anything about Justin Champagny because he was injured before any of the games began. And... I really wanted to see what Justin Champagny had been working on in the offseason to get himself ready for this point. Because even though he impressed last season, he had like some sort of a role with the Toronto Raptors in the NBA near the beginning of the season, had that near buzzer beater against the Oklahoma City Thunder that just didn't get off in time. That would have been such a great moment for the rookie. But even after that, had some time in the G League where he was wildly successful. I mean, you guys know I had Raptors 9 of 5 season tickets. I went to all but one home game. And especially in the playoffs, like Justin Champagny was so, so good. Such a different player than what he was at the beginning of the season. You could tell he had been working on things. But nonetheless, all this is great. Still not guaranteed a spot on the team. And he's going to have to earn it in training camp. Because the contract that he did end up signing was a multi-year deal, yes. But it's a partial guarantee in year one. And it is non-guaranteed in year two. This is a pretty standard contract. It's a similar one that the Raptors just gave to DJ Wilson. It's essentially the contract that says, okay... Here you go. You're coming to summer camp. Can you earn a spot on the roster? Because competition for these spots is going to be hot. Like there are going to be a lot of people vying to make the Toronto Raptors roster. So if you don't know how it works in the summer, your summer camp, you can have 20 players on your roster. By the time the season starts, you need to cut that down to 17, 15 plus two. You have 15 people on your NBA roster and you also have two two-way contracts so guys who can go up and down from the G League and the NBA, which equates to 17 total players. Now, we can take a look at this graphic that I have here kind of showcasing what everybody's contract structure is. So up top, you've got 12 guys in the guaranteed contract category, though all 12, I wouldn't say are guaranteed a spot on the opening day roster because Femi Luke is there and maybe he could get cut. Maybe the Raptors could waive him and just eat that 1.9 million he's owed. A tick down is the partial guarantee section where you have Armani Brooks, Delano Banton, DJ Wilson now, and as well as Justin Champagny, two late additions there. I imagine Delano Banton will get guaranteed at some point, but Armani Brooks is a player going to be fighting for a roster spot along with Champagny and along with DJ Wilson. Under that is the RFA in David Johnson. And David Johnson was selected 47th overall last season. And I've been seeing people online who have been talking about him because Truthfully, he wasn't great in the G League last season. It was just kind of like, eh, okay, like, you know, from a guy we drafted, we would have wanted better, a little bit underwhelming. And then in Summer League, I was really looking forward to see what David Johnson had been working on to get himself, you know, up a level, like just develop his game. And I have not seen anything. He's been extremely important in Summer League as far as I am concerned. And the buzz online is like, well, I don't want to waste a draft pick, so I, I don't want to get rid of him now. He's an RFA, but like, you know, there's some talented guys on this graphic here. Like, if there's no space for him, there's no space for him because he just hasn't impressed me at all, at all in his Raptors career, especially in Summer League so far. And then you go down to the two-way contract that's already been given to Ron Harper Jr. So there is one more two-way contract available. I don't imagine they're going to take that away from him. So only one of their two-way contract available. A lot of people going to be vying for that. And just so you guys know, just so you guys have a reference uh, in the UFA section, Jeff Down does not have a contract with the Raptors, though I imagine that is going to change. We're going to talk about him a little bit more. And also, just so people are aware, Yuta Watanabe is also not on the Toronto Raptors. He's UFA, and there's been 
like no buzz whatsoever about him returning to the team, nor do I think they should bring him back. It's an unfortunate because, you know, we, we like you to watch now. He's a likable guy. He's just not a very good basketball player. So I don't imagine he's going to come back. I just had him there because I wanted you guys to know in case you weren't aware he's a UFA as well as Isaac Bonga. He's another one that won't be returning to the Raptors next season, seemingly. So let's talk about what roster spots are going to be available because if we take the players here actually on contract with the Raptors, there's 18 of them. Jeff Dallin, I imagine, will get an opportunity, which would make 19. That would leave one more summer camp spot available. You know, Raptors can shop around. They can find guys. Last year, the 20th guy signed was Reggie Perry, who I thought was great for the Raptors 9 of 5. I wanted him to get a chance with the Raptors in the NBA. Didn't happen. Got a shot with the Trailblazers. Looks like he's going to be going back there playing the NBA for another season. So you can still find some good players in these situations. But looking through the roster... How I imagine this is all going to unfold. So as far as the top 12 guys who are on guaranteed contracts, the only two that stick out are Stevie Hyaluk and Malachi Flynn. Also, by the way, Christian Coloco technically not on a guaranteed contract because he hasn't signed his contract yet, but like that's going to happen. So I just put him there to make it easier just to digest the graphic. But nonetheless, Malachi Flynn, I really think he's going to get one more year. I think he'll get one more opportunity before the Raptors decide whether or not it's worth continuing to pursue, trying to develop him. I don't think this year is going to go very well, but... Uh, I can't see the Raptors cutting him. Simi Hailuk is an interesting one because he's owed $1.9 million, which is, you know, it's not nothing, but, you know, for an organization as big as the Raptors, for ownership like MLSE, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, they can certainly eat that contract, which is a young player that they really want to bring in and give some development time with the team. So that's one to look out for. But ultimately, you know, Simi Hailuk probably isn't going to be playing this season. So, you know, taking on that 1.9 million dollars for a younger guy or just a development guy who's also probably not going to play this season like do you really want to pay him 1.9 million dollars just to have somebody else in the team who's also not going to play I don't know if that's gonna happen I, I, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they were to cut Simi Hailuk and waive that 1.9 million dollars but at this particular point I would find that unlikely. Going further into the roster, you know, we get to the guys who are on non-guaranteed deals. I think that Armani Brooks is going to get himself a spot in the NBA. I think Delano Banton is going to do that as well. That's 14 players right there. Then you have the more difficult ones here. Champagny, DJ Wilson, David Johnson. David Johnson is an RFA. I know we drafted him, but I've seen much better out of DJ Wilson, who was great in the last summer league game. And I've seen a lot more from Justin Champagne, who took over some G League games, something that David Johnson was completely uh, not capable of doing. So the 15th spot in the roster, in my opinion, should be a battle between Justin Champagne and DJ Wilson. The one who loses out on that battle probably gets on that two-way contract. Now, I think DJ Wilson would be a great guy to have on a two-way contract, get him some minutes in the G League where, you know, maybe, like, there, there's certainly some sort of talent there. A guy who was drafted, I believe it was either just inside or just outside of the lottery, uh, like, a few years ago, like, four or five years ago now. But I know that there is still some talent there. I would love to see if he's just within our system, if we could develop him a little bit more. Based on what we've seen, I think he would be worthy of that opportunity. I also wouldn't be shocked to see Armani Brooks fitting into that two-way slot as well instead of Champagne or DJ Wilson. That two-way contract given to Ron Harper Jr., I imagine, will remain. I know he hasn't been that impressive in Summer League, but I think that's somebody they would like to work with the Raptors 905. Most of his game is the fact that he's a catch-and-shoot threat on offense. He just hasn't really been able to show that in Summer League. I hope that can change in the G League. And Jeff Down is a player that kind of came out of nowhere and maybe made the decision a little bit more difficult. I kind of discarded him with my previous comments about who's gonna make which roster spot now down has been great in summer league he's been quietly like one of the best if not the best and most consistent toronto raptors players he's a very smart player he's a very intelligent player on the ball he can shoot he can get to the rim he can create offense for himself he can create offense for others admittedly there's not as much room to grow with down who is 25 years old but the same thing kind of remains for dj wilson who's 26 years old but you know we've kind of seen him in the nba already do some decent things for us so i think that he maybe gets a little bit more of a precedent and ultimately if i had to guess i would say based on the people here like Downton and david johnson probably don't make the, the 17 man roster that I'm, we're kind of constructing here but i would really not be surprised to see Downton overtake somebody as far as you know the talent on this board here i didn't really discuss david johnson about not wanting him on the team but like he's done nothing really to impress me and everybody else here has done something worthy, in my opinion, 
of warranting a shot at getting on the roster. David Johnson, just because we drafted him, I mean, like, it's a 47th overall pick. At the end of the day, like, we traded, what was it, Matt Thomas for that pick or, or Terrence Davis for that pick. You know, we got two second-round picks. One of them was Delano Banton, which was a huge W. One of them is David Johnson, which is looking like a huge L. And, you know, it's okay to just admit that wasn't a good draft pick and move on and sign a player who's more worthy of that position. And that's how I would go about it. Justin Champagny just got that deal, and I think that with the way he played last season, uh, I would really like to see him again this season. In fact, I, I would... I would say just based on what you saw with the 905 last season, and especially in the NBA last season, that is somebody that you want to continue to try to develop because there is a player there. Like, I don't think this is going to be like a main rotation player this season. By by no means, I think that certainly possible for him. But this is a player who has a like a good amount of skill set. He is a good defender. He's a very good rebounder for his size, a decent catch and shoot throughout the outside showed a lot of good signs of somebody who can start creating his own offense, especially from deep, but also getting to the rim and slashing. Like there is certainly a talented player who does all the dirty and gritty work as well in Justin Champagne. And that's somebody who needs a spot on the roster. The rest of them, like Armani Brooks, DJ Wilson, like I said, maybe they're going to be battling out for a spot, maybe in the 15 man, maybe they're on the two-way deal, more so DJ Wilson there, but Jeff Down as well. Like, there's no doubt this man has some talent. So to sum it all up, this Justin Champagne contract maybe isn't as exciting as it seems, but I really do feel like he's going to earn himself a spot on that roster, get that money guaranteed for this season. As far as it goes for Sumi Hyland, I know a lot of you guys want him waived, but, you know, taking on that $1.9 million for a player coming in, like, if it is Jeff Dowden, like, that's not a player that really significantly changes your team and you're paying $1.9 million plus whatever down is going to be making over the course of the season to make that happen. I don't really think MLSC is going to want to take that on. I don't think that's going to happen, but there is going to be a very fun fight to watch throughout summer camp to see who makes this roster. There's a big battle last year between Wainwright and Decker. Decker blew up in the last preseason game, just absolutely showed against the Wizards and earned himself a spot. He also did get cut and we were operating with 16 guys instead of 17 but regardless i'm excited to see what happens justin champagne getting signed is a good thing for the raptors let's see who makes the roster so what do you guys make of justin champagne signing this multi-year deal who do you think is going to be on this toronto raptors roster when we get set for the season start let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that is it for me for today Thank you so much for watching this video. Please, if you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. Goes a long way to supporting the channel. When you drop a like, it lets YouTube know that people who are on the platform with similar interests to you may also enjoy this video and therefore it is recommended to more people. And make sure that if you're one of these new people that you are subscribed to Amateur Hour Sports. We just hit 10K. We're on our road to 11K now. And I'm giving you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news in return for that sub. I promise to keep you entertained. Join our Discord, the link in the description. And I'll see you again next time for another video.